light and colour are some of the most important aspects of our day-to-day lives, and when it comes to entertainment and certainly games, they become paramount. As our consoles, PC and TVs have evolved, the connection from the digital to the physical has become more and more stark. But connecting them can be incredibly impactful and engrossing. Step forward the Fantasy 3 from LightMy. This can light up your entertainment space in more ways than one. Now out of the box, which is well packaged and designed, you get an international style plug fitted here with a 3-pin UK style, 4K HDMI 2.1 cable, the LED strips themselves nicely wrapped into a cable wheel, and finally the brains of the outfit, that central controller. This is where you can plug in up to four HDMI inputs, one HDMI output, and then on the right you have the USB-C input for the LEDs and a USB-C port which can be used to power the device, but just as a pass-through without the LED at the back. That will need the main leads plugged in to be able to power the LED. That does require slightly more ampage than the USB port will deliver. Once the contents are unpacked, the final piece is a pack of clips using 3M sticky pads, and these complement the 3M tape that runs along the LED themselves. Once you've checked all the contents, it's best to then plug it all in before you attach it for the TV, for obvious reasons of any fault. And once that's done, you can then move into the installation. I've already done that here, so the next step is to remove my TV from the wall, or turn it around if you have it on a stand, this works in both configurations. Now, as the LEDs run around the TV screen as an extension of your display, you need to order the kit that matches your TV size. My LG OLED here is a 55 inch screen and this fits perfectly. In the links below, you can pick your TV size within the order. Now, the fitting to the TV is very simple and quick and you can skip this straight to the bright part and the testing or carry on through if this section will help. Once you unpack it, you'll take the LED strips themselves and they come with that 3M tape. Just pop it off and peel part of the end back and then just start from where your HDMI ports are on the back of the TV. For mine, it's the bottom right. So we go from the bottom right to the bottom left and then we go up to the top and then from the left to the right and then back down where we started at the HDMI ports. You then take those 3M clips and just attach them to each of the ends of the LED cables and also the loop cable that joins all these ends up just to make sure that everything's neat and tidy and nothing gets caught or snagged when you're putting it back on the wall. Once that's done, which should only take a few minutes, you're then ready to try it out and see if it all works. At this point, the full Harley would just put the TV back on the wall and use it, but we need to test it first because if you have got an issue, you gotta take it all back off again. This is your feed from your LEDs. So this needs to go into the TV and this goes in here. So it says, so that's your LED strip. That's the TV's USB. So you put your strip light in there, so it's in. You can see that you've got TV. So that's the one that goes into the TV, obviously. Plug that one in. And then we've got HDMI in, which is our PlayStation 3. Sorry, PlayStation 5. PlayStation 3. They will work with PlayStation 3. Anything that's HDMI bound. And then you can then put the power in. So power on. Illuminations and they all light up, so as you can see, and that's a full test. So, one quick final thing to note is because it's all around where your HDMI port is to know which direction the TV lights work on the box itself, there's an indicator that says is it in left or right mode. So, the back of the box here, we're in left mode because of where we've done the route. So, you just need to hold this button down, and you'll see that light flick. As so, and then you get a different colour scheme, it flashes and just confirms that it's done that. And then you'll see, it's now saying that it's in left mode. Because we know it's working now, so we'll put the TV back on the wall. I'm not going to show you that, because if you've got a TV, you should know how to fit and take a TV off the wall. Um, but as you can see, I've already mounted it, so it's a two minute job. Back in a moment. So the other thing is that the device itself has an app, the Lit My Home app, which you can download on the iOS store, or the App Store, or the Google Store. Um, you connect to it, you can use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And once you're connected, it allows you to then play around with the settings. You can do color schemes, almost like a shop demonstration mode. You can change the brightness and the color blends of the LED. 
you don't need it uh, and by default the LEDs are at the brightest setting but it does allow you to have a little bit of fine tweaking and tuning to the actual TV and output itself in terms of what you want and then there's like a shop demonstration mode or a party mode where you can have it flashing around dancing around you can use it as a nice distraction while you fish out your Huey Lewis and the news CD you like Huey Lewis and the news be aware that once you've plugged every device in, you will need to reconfigure them once as they will detect it as a brand new screen, obviously. The device itself is fully HDMI 2.1 compliant, which means it fully supports HDR, 4K 120, 8K 60 FPS. So all these functions and features on your latest consoles and PC will all work straight out of the box with no issues at all. It worked with every device I tested on it, Xbox One, PS3, PS5, PC, everything. Even retro consoles, as you can see here, work perfectly. The only caveat there is you need to route them through a HDMI output. At that point, it will then work on the screen. It even supports VRR theory theoretically due to the fact that it's HDMI 2.1 but there were some issues in that area I'll get to towards the end of the video. The device itself auto switches so you can simply turn one device on one device off and it will just flick over to that input making it very simple and easy to use. The other caveat is you can power it from your USB from the TV itself that gives you pass through but no LEDs but it is an option if you don't want to turn on those flashing lights all the time. So testing the device really is going to focus on a few key areas. Light quality and brightness, which is the like accuracy to the RGB elements on the screen. The alignment and response time to the action itself as you play, watch a movie, all the colours change. And ultimately how all of these elements merge and what they add and extend from those on screen pixels. So let's get into the testing then, starting with brightness. The LEDs can replicate most colours from the RGP spectrum with strong and vibrant primary colours from red, green, blue and then cyan, magenta into purples, yellows, oranges and the blend of pixel colour is excellent. With 72 LEDs per metre and a bright output it can accurately replicate all lights in a scene, aside black for obvious reasons. Now in modern titles, movies and even retro classics as here with Sega Rally on the Sega Saturn, the vivid colours of the green grass, the blue skies, the dirt to the cars and the barriers as they hurtle past, it convincingly extends the on-screen pixels onto the wall behind and it really blends the screen action within your room. Other bright retro titles such as Croc here on the PlayStation 1 also show the vivid and vibrant colours it can replicate and project onto the wall. The further away from the wall your TV is, the wider the projection is, with my TV being around 7 to 12 inches away at its furthest point here. Now it works even in well lit rooms with the glow around the TV standing out quite clearly, but the darker your surroundings the more impactful the spectrum of colours and brightness are. Now using the app you can jump between two main sync modes, video, recreation and game. Now video is the slowest with a lower colour range and a slower reaction to screen shifts and coverage. This presents more of an ambient mood light that represents the general tones across the screen and adds to the movie without having fast changes and jumps between. The diffuse slider adjusts the speed within these modes of how fast the LEDs actually change to replicate the on-screen colours and game mode is the fastest and in this mode and setting the diffuse level to maximum the LEDs do indeed sync with the TV at full rate. As you see here, using the 120fps mode in GT7, with the red tyres at the side of the screen, captured at 240fps here, we can slow it down as I change the camera view, and you can see the LEDs react instantly with the screen change, hitting the maximum 120hz output level of 8 milliseconds. Very impressive stuff, and in this gaming mode, you have both the most precise level of colour reproduction around the screen at all times, but also instant response to every overtake, particle explosion and even flickering lights in Blade Runner bring the cinema right into the room even more. The recreation mode is somewhere in the middle of these two modes and is closest to the game mode with a good colour range and precise mapping to the on-screen action.
The caveat to all these modes though is the system does focus on the edge of the screens with some center sampling also, but a pure black screen or dark vignette around the screen will dim and possibly turn most of the lights off. This is by design and it can even add to the tension in horror games as you see here with Dead Space or action moments as the screen suddenly goes from pure black to pure white. Your room is bathed in the accompanying illuminance alongside of it. Now using my tests here, you can see the screen can maintain almost pixel to pixel alignment with the blends and even single elements using the combination of shifts and blends from primary colors here and other elements such as bouncing balls pose no issues for the Neo 3 box as each ball is tracked, faded and even blended as they bounce around my 55 inch screen. In the color reproduction and lack of any latency, it's very impressive and certainly makes this a viable choice for even high frame rate gamers. But in films, I would recommend the video mode as the one to one mapping of color reaction to the frame, even at 24 FPS, can be quite drastic. But the choice is yours to set up as you wish. So the use of LED in PC towers, GPUs, keyboards, they're not really for me and it's something that I'm not a fan of. It really doesn't suit my tastes. I prefer the clean device and a simple design of most of my equipment. But for a mood and interactive lightning setup for your screen, it can make the most sense and certainly for me. With the Fantasy 3, I found that very quickly, I actually got used to the extra light, the ambience and atmosphere that it added to almost every game I played. Be that a frantic arcade run and gun shooter in Nex Machina or a track fueled race in GT7. I was surprised how flat and less impactful I found the game when the lights were actually off. The fact that it can be hooked up and used in anger at the push of a button on or off and the extra vibrancy they add to your favourite movies in a snow speeder battle on Hoth or a skin job retirement in Blade Runner. Whatever I tested with this kit I found no chinks in its armour. Side 1. The device is ready for all modern TVs and entertainment, even 8K 60fps if that becomes a thing, but the pass through means you lose nothing hooking this up with 120fps at 4K, HDR and even theoretically VRR. But this is where I had my only issue. With VRR enabled, which I could only enable on Series X and S for some reason, the PS5 would not detect the screen as VRR capable. On games that did support VR on Xbox, such as Dead Space Remake, it would flicker to black and then cut off. Others would flick on and off as the screen was updated, such as the menu here with the Tari 50 collection. And I hope this is something that they can fix in a later model. And if you do want to use VRR, then you will have to unplug this and plug your PC or console into the screen directly and miss out on all that heavenly color fuel beauty. And that is my only real niggle. The range of colour reproduction, the response time, the ease of setup, the wide choice of input supported and simple application which can all be used with Alexa and other devices if you want to add more lights into your home. It's a welcome addition to any home gaming or cinema setup with little to no compromises. At £199 though, it's certainly not a cheap item for sure, but the quality and improved immersion it offers, including retro games, which I was very impressed with and I've been using often since, the only catch here is, as noted, you need to stretch the image to fill the screen to get the best out of it due to those black borders, but even in 4x3, it does enhance every game I played but only you can decide if that price works for you. But I must admit that now that I've been able to experience it for myself, I do prefer the ambience it adds to many of my gaming sessions and using the links below, you can get even more discounts off that price from the supplier direct. The impact it has on your home media experience could be rewarding and most certainly enlightening. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Light My Fantasy 3. Hopefully it's something that might fit into your home gaming media setup. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Leave all your thoughts and feedback below. And remember, I am completely self-funded and independent, so anything you can do to like, share, support, and comment down below really helps. And I'll catch you on the next one.